I woke up this morning with a flat tire. It wasn't totally flat. It was, uh, I should have taken a picture of it, but basically it was flat enough that I couldn't drive it. I literally had to go out there at eight o'clock this morning and get a hand pump that you would use for a bike and just pump it up enough, just enough, so that I could uh, drive it to a real pump. Mm -hmm. That was my morning. Um, luckily, I'm still on, uh, I'm still on Iceland time. Uh, we got back yesterday. Uh, from a vacation, a uh, vacation that I wanted to vlog, um, but it didn't work out. My wife and I went away for the first time by ourselves in like four years. Um, we left the kids at home. We went for a week to Sweden for a few days and then Iceland for a few days. It was, it was pretty great. However, after the being on a flight all night, because that's the only way to go to Europe from the East Coast is on a red eye. Um, my wife uh, got a stomach flu. So that knocked us out for 36 hours, basically. We spent a lot of time in the hotel room. It was fine. We had a nice hotel. I'm glad I actually paid extra for a nice hotel because it, it kind of worked out in our favor. After about 36 hours and she was on the mend, we finally got to go out and do some stuff. So we were really only there for like a day and a half. Sweden's great. It really is. It's the kind of place where I don't know if I necessarily go as a tourist, um, particularly Stockholm. If I was looking for places that I wanted to move, Sweden would be in the would be in the short list for sure. It, the city's clean, transportation's fantastic, everybody's friendly, everybody speaks English because I'm a dumb American. I love it. I honestly could live there, no problem. Um, I know the winters are a little long. And I'm not exactly a huge fan of cold weather, but there's a lot going for it, for sure. Uh, so three days later, we went to Iceland um, from Sweden. So it's a three-hour flight. And uh, that was awesome. If you have an opportunity to go to Iceland, go to Iceland. It's really cool. It really is. It's some of the most beautiful landscape I've ever seen. It's close. The flights are cheap. Um, there's a lot to see. There's a lot to do. They, they live more in a way than I live. I'm not a city person. I live in the suburbs. I've had a car since I was a teenager. You can't ever go anywhere without a car. It's just the way that I'm used to living. And Icelanders live like me. There's a lot. There's just so much to see. It's, it's really cool. We did do some of the touristy stuff. Uh, one night we went to the Blue Lagoon. It was really cool, but so windy. It was so windy. It was like 30 mile an hour winds. And uh, it was something else. You go out in the freezing cold. You rub mud all over your face. You stick your head under the waterfall. It's, <laughs> it's pretty neat. I, I gotta say. It's super touristy. It's not cheap. We were there from dinner time until about, until it really started getting dark. And then it really started getting cold. It's this weird juxtaposition of like, your body's warm and your face is super cold, and especially with the wind blowing in it and everything. And, and then you're getting this really sulfury, gross water in your eyes. And I had my glasses on and they're basically had this white film across them and it didn't matter. It was still really neat. But after about an hour, you're done. Like there's just nothing else you can do at this point. You just, you got to get out because you're, you're like wiped. You're, it's exhausting, actually. It's weirdly enough just being in this pool with the hot and the cold and the and the wind and the, the whatever. It's exhausting. And you, you get out and you freeze your butt off because it's 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, try to get a row back on and get back inside. It's something I've never done before. On the way back into town, we stopped at a, at a Taco Bell. I think we got four items or something like that. And um, the one thing about Iceland that's not great is prepared food. Everything there for that is super expensive. If you go to the grocery store and buy food and cook yourself, it's not, it's, it's cheaper. It's as cheap as it is here, I guess. I mean, I guess it's, there's certain things that they don't have or that are going to be really expensive, but the majority of stuff is cheap. You can get away with not spending a ton of money if you're, if you're cooking yourself, if you have that kind of situation. But if you're going out to eat, to give you an idea, we went to Taco Bell, we got four things. 
There was two burritos. There was a there was a regular taco. Um, Crunchwrap. And those four items came out to be 30 some dollars, $32 or something like that. Like ridiculous. An $8 burrito just seems insane. Totally insane. It's like going out for a regular meal, I guess. We ordered pizza from the place next to us um, one night. And we were looking at the menu and we ended up just getting a large plane because we didn't care. It was late. We just wanted to eat something and go to bed. But we looked at some of the pizzas on there and some of the pizzas, large pizzas with like at all pizzas that would be $18 here or something like that were like $36, like just double what you would pay here. Europe's different in a way that the people that are working there actually make a, a, a decent wage and they're not working off of tips. So like things are going to be a little more expensive anyway. And then there's taxes on top of that, et cetera. I know things are going to be more expensive, but $36 for a pizza. The next day we drove out to, they do something called the Golden Circle. And it's sort of like the most touristy route you can do because it's basically the amount of nature that you could get in a drive away from, from Reykjavik. So it's the really touristy thing to do. There's a national park and then there's like a lake and you can actually go diving between tectonic plates and stuff. We didn't stop there because uh, we weren't going snorkeling in the weather that it was. It just wasn't happening. And then there's a, uh, a geyser that you can go to, uh, active, active geyser. It spouts every four or five minutes or so. And, uh, and then there's a, uh, a waterfall uh, called Sulfos that is one of the top waterfalls in the world. It's absolutely amazing. It's not high um, by any stretch of the imagination, but it's this, like this multiple level thing that just, whew, it's unbelievable. So basically we went and saw these three things. It took us a good chunk of the day. And then we drove back into town, um, walked around town for a little bit, got some dinner. Went back and watched a movie. Um, the next day, on the way home, uh, or the last day, we were our flight wasn't until 5 p.m. So we basically had all day in Reykjavik. The weather was so ridiculous on the last day. Gusting winds, 30 miles an hour and up. Sheets and sheets of rain. I should have had Wendy take a video of me when I was getting gas right before we were ready to drop the car off because I was outside for, what, three minutes tops? I was soaked. And the wind is just whipping in my face, and I should have I should have gotten more video of that. It was it was just unbelievable. I've never I mean it was like basically like when the hurricane roll when like a hurricane rolls up the the shore and hits Pennsylvania. Um, that's kind of what it's like, except this was just like standard operating procedure. This is just a rainy, windy day in Iceland. The people that we saw there that were Icelanders were not phased by this at all where everybody that was a tourist was like taken back by how bad it was. And it was, it was crazy. It's just something we don't get. It's just another world. Anyone that has the opportunity to go to Iceland has to go. You have to. And even though we were only there for like really 72 hours, we immediately said, okay, we're coming back. We're bringing the kids. We're bringing other people. We have to have people come see this because it's, it's something you'll never see. Uh, it's something you'll never see like it. I've traveled a bunch. I haven't gone to the Far East or I haven't gone to South America or anything like that. I've done a lot of different places in Europe and, and, and America. And this was the, probably the nicest, craziest place I've ever been to. And the fact that it's a five hour flight and you can get flights for under $500. And you can get an Airbnb for $150 a night that's a full apartment and get a car for $160. You have to go. And don't give it 72 hours. Give it five, six, seven days and just see what there is, see what's there because it's it's amazing. I don't think it'll be two or three years before I go back and really give the place the time that it deserves because it's amazing.